friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is actually going to be a book review. I just finished reading a book literally last night and it was so good that I wrote down like all my thoughts and I really want to just talk to you about them here today. So the book that I'm talking about, as you'll see from the title of this video, is called Everything is Fucked, a book about hope. And this is by the same author who wrote The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, which went so viral everyone loved it and after reading this i understand why i've already ordered the subtle art not giving a fuck it's on its way i'm just waiting for it to get here and that author is mark manson let's get into it so one thing i really really loved about this book and you'll remember i said this in my july favorites video if you had a chance to watch that is that this book does not feel belittling so often i feel like i read these different kind of self-help style books and I just feel like the authors use this language that like makes them see seem like they know all this stuff and like they know it and you don't and you need to learn it. And it just feels like it can be very harsh sometimes and like you're reading it and you just feel like ugh instead of like empowered. And I feel like this is the complete opposite. Mark Manson admits to his own struggles with the thing he things he's talking about. He it says things in such a clear way that it makes sense and it feels like there's a clear path of like how to achieve these things you're trying to without it feeling impossible because I feel like so often that's the case. I loved that, you know, he's talking about heavy topics. It's changing yourself as a person and it's very difficult. And I love that he's really able to break up those heavy topics with comedic undertones narrative devices things like that that really don't make it feel so harsh and make it a lot more enjoyable to read the next thing i do want to talk about is those narratives a little bit more he adds a lot of these narratives throughout he starts the book talking about a war hero from world war ii and he continues he talks about newton he talks about einstein so, and he tells all these different stories. He doesn't just say, this is what happened. He tells what led up to it. He tells the story. And it just brings this book to another level. And it really appeals to the feeling brain that Manson talks about in his book. I also thought that it was a really interesting journey that Manson brings his reader on through Hope. Hope starts the book through this war hero. And, you know, Manson talks about how heroes bring hope when there is none. And that's, you know, kind of where you start this book and you're like, okay, hope for the win. Yeah. And then as he continues, he kind of is just like, but also hope is the worst thing we've ever done to ourselves because hope is what allows us to be disappointed and to feel like we're not living up and to allow ourselves to not change and just hope things will just happen and just change for us when they won't. You have to just make the changes. So then he kind of makes you be like, okay, so I should stop hoping. And then at the very end of the book, he brings it back to his own hopes. So it just doesn't, it doesn't feel judgmental in any way. It's like understanding that yes, hope ruins a lot, but also it's really important and just about finding that balance. And I think by the way he does that, it really brings it, the reader through a journey of almost acceptance of hope and understanding of hope. So I thought that was a really interesting and creative way that um, Mark Manson went about that so I really enjoyed that and I was talking with a friend about this book and we both agreed that we just really love the way he thinks the way he talks about different subjects and the way he digests them and explains them is just so interesting and creative and it was so enjoyable to read about Mark Manson also does a really good job of appealing to both the thinking brain and the feeling brain and he talks about that in the book where he says, this is the whole problem. Speaking to both brains, integrating our brains into a cooperative, coordinated, unified whole. Because if self-control is, is an illusion of the thinking brain's overblown self-regard, then it's self-acceptance that will save us, accepting our emotions and working with them rather than against them. And I think that, you know, especially after reading that, I have such an appreciation for how Mark Manson was able to incorporate both the thinking and feeling brain into this book and really combine them together in a way that made it so both parts of my brain were happy when I was reading it. 
So that was really, really interesting. The next thing he talks about is Isaac Newton and his laws of emotions. Obviously, that's not what Isaac Newton actually came up with. However, Mark Manson changed things a little bit, it makes a parallel universe where Isaac Newton was fascinated by psychology instead of science. He describes Newton's different laws as they apply to emotions and psychology, and he calls him this emo Newton in the parallel universe, and it was just so creative and so fun to read about. I couldn't wait to see what else every time I had to close the book. Whenever I had the chance, I wanted to read more and see what else he, and how he was going to kind of work it in. Then, kind of towards the end of the book, Mark Manson actually is able to incorporate some graphs and charts, diagrams, you know, that kind of stuff. And here you can see one here. And I think that it was just a really good way for him to break up his writing and make it a little easier to kind of read and see things like that. So I thought that was great. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is Mark Manson talks about the idea of things being a means to an end. And I'm sure everybody's heard that before, the idea of being a means to an end. But what he talks about is this idea of using people as a means to an end. So if I want to go get my mom a Starbucks coffee because I know it'll make her happy, that's great. I'm making my mom the end, her happiness. However, if I'm going to go buy my mom coffee so she'll be happy, so she'll give me $100 because I want to go shopping, that's using my mother and her happiness as a means to an end. The idea goes for anything or anyone, but the general idea is don't use people as a means to an end. Don't use them as a tool to get something else you want. And I don't think that's something I would ever intentionally do, but seeing it written out like that makes me even more aware and makes me, you know, really think harder every time I do something for somebody or I could accidentally use someone as a means for an end. And I think that it's just so great having it written out like that and to kind of make myself more aware and thinking more about the idea. And then he also talks about this psychological experiment and he calls it the blue dot effect. And the idea is, is that the more we expect something bad to happen, even if it doesn't, we're still going to see it. We're still going to perceive things that way. So if we expect there's going to be so much gun violence, every single time we see something about gun violence, we're going to have it exaggerated in our minds because we already have this perception of how bad something is. We could never have a shooting again, but something similar to gun violence comes up and it'll seem like it's still happening all the time. And I think that's just so interesting because it kind of makes me more aware, am I creating something in my own head or is this the reality of what's happening? And I think that'll be really interesting to see how that affects me going forward. The next thing he talks about is pain being a universal constant. He brings us in tying it to Einstein and how Einstein theory of relativity suggests that space and time are not in fact universal constants, that rather the speed of light is, but he brings forward the idea emotionally pain is a universal constant and how we all believe our individual selves are the universal constant. We are never changing. We are always consistent, but in reality it's pain. Pain is always going to be there and everything revolves around pain. Happiness is the temporary removal of pain. Sadness and anger and, you know, all the negative stuff is the temporary augmentation of it. And I think that was so interesting, especially like even after just I read that part of the book, every time I've just been like, ugh, this sucks or this is not fun or I don't want this, it kind of makes me think back of like, okay, this is always going to happen. There's always going to be bad stuff that happens. Let's just deal with it better. And it has been so helpful, I can't even tell you. So it's just, I have so much appreciation for that alone. And then the last thing that I want to really bring up in regards to the book is a section that is in here. I think it's right here actually, okay. So Manson brings up the whole story of how North and South Korea got separated and the new ruler that was placed in South Korea, um, which was supposed to be a more democratic um, country, state, and it just didn't go well, and 
the ruler was against Buddhism. The country was like 80% Buddhist at the time. And how there was the Buddhist monk who set himself on fire in protest. And he talks about how this Buddhist, as he was burning to death, literally never moved, never made a sound, just meditated the entire time he was burning alive. And then he talks about the Buddha. And he says, The Buddha said that suffering is like being shot by two arrows. The first arrow is the physical pain. It's the metal piercing the skin, the force colliding into the body. The second arrow is the mental pain. The meaning and emotion we attach to the being struck, the narratives that we spin our, in our mind about whether we deserved or didn't deserve what happened. In many cases, our mental pain is far worse than any physical pain. In most cases, it lasts for longer. Through the practice of meditation, the Buddha said that if we could train ourselves to be struck only by the first arrow, we could essentially render ourselves invincible to any mental or emotional pain. I thought this was really interesting because there's like quite a few people in my life and around me that really enjoy meditation and think it's like really, really great. And I've never really been able to get it. It's never really made sense to me. I felt like my mind just moves too much. I, I feel worse when I meditate. And this wasn't all that he said on the subject, but that kind of sums up a little bit of it. And I think that I've seen meditation a different way and now I'm willing to try it so that maybe I can find something good out of it like the people around me can. So I'm really excited. I actually agreed to go on a meditation cruise with my mom and my grandma and my sister in a few months actually. So I'll update you after that and let you know how I feel about it after really practicing it like more. So that's all I really have to say on this book. Overall, it was a really, really great book. I feel like it made me think so much, which I loved, but it wasn't so much that I was overwhelmed or annoyed by it. Like I'm on summer, I don't want to be like feeling like I'm in a class. And I just, I enjoyed it so thoroughly. I definitely recommend it. If you enjoyed his first book, I'm sure you would enjoy this one. I'm waiting on his other book to get in the mail. After I finish that, I'll let you guys know what I thought of that one. If you've read this book, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know if there are any other books you'd like me to review, and I definitely take a look at them. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!